Welcome to The King's Table, a podcast out of King's Hill Church in Boston, where we seek to elevate the Bible over opinion, answering the questions you have. I'm your host, Jonathan Mosley. Today we have with us Seth Norris. He's the pastor of Perkinsville Church in Boone, North Carolina, located near Appalachian State. He's had a lot of experience discipling college students. This episode is a discussion around graduating seniors who have the question, how do I decide what's next? Seth, thanks for joining us today. Hey, brother. Thanks for having me. It's good to be with you, my friend. Uh, man, I'm not going to lie. Whenever I say your name, the image of Chuck Norris actually comes to <laughs> mind. I, I just I can't help myself. <laughs> well, I, I have a new beard, as you know. Some will see. Uh, but if people are listening, they won't. And so the memes have already begun. Uh, Chuck Norris memes with me since I've, I've never had a beard in my life. And it's happening, man. But it's okay. Chuck Norris is meme worthy, and it's an honor to be thought of in the same camp. Well, as Chuck Norris is to uh, karate and self defense, <laughs> uh, that's what you are to me in terms of making well, disciples and having God's kingdom in mind. So it's a privilege to have you on here, man. Yeah, brother. Thank you. Same to you, my friend. By the way. Mm. <laughs> well, Seth, you're you're in a local church and right beside a pretty well known college, and and you're seeing people students graduate all the time and so i this you know we just want to have a discussion around how can we guide students you know having god's kingdom in mind after they graduate so what are when students are about to to cross that finish line in school what are you saying to graduating seniors and and even leading up to graduation what are you saying in the years yeah. leading up to that freshman sophomore juniors so we'd love to hear that conversation you're having with them yeah, I think, I think it's important you, you hit on it uh, when you said leading up to graduation, and then I'll kind of come back to graduation if I can. We were having a conversation um, la late last year with a couple of high school seniors, and um, just an informal conversation, and I asked them if, if they would consider, or if they had considered, giving two years of their life to missions after college. Um, and they you know, both said no pretty quickly. I asked why. And uh, they didn't really articulate anything clearly, but they were able to say, well, part of it's because we've never been asked. And so um, ascending culture begins with an asking culture. And I know you are well versed in that. And uh, but that begins early. And I think that's incumbent upon it, us as disciplers of other people. So not just being discipled, but the minute we start discipling someone, asking them kingdom questions. And getting their heart to at least consider that as a potential calling on their life at some point down the road. So this is something that begins well before even freshman year of college, as soon as someone comes into contact with the believing community. Um, and that, that's just kind of a reminder to me. But uh, from day one, our, our college ministry and the way we think about, about things, in fact, we tell our students that we are thinking about their graduation day the, the minute they step their foot on App State's campus. Hmm. Um, we, we, in fact, encourage them that we actually care more about their graduation, their freshman year than they even do. Um, <laughs> because we want, we want them to, to explore and at least uh, consider uh, God's call in their life at graduation. Now, let me, let me pause here. I'm not talking about, although I am talking about full-time missionary service, journeyman, you know, NAM opportunities, church planning. I'm talking about uh, seeing their, their training in college, their, their vocational training as, as the very means by which God will call them to missions. So that begins a change of mindset that, you know, many of us, I think, will, will be professionally trained, academically trained. And then we really just say, we'll go do that job somewhere and then find a church to do ministry through. Very good stuff. But we ought to take away kind of that dualism. There's no line between those two, right? Um, how will the vocation uh, to which God's calling me be the platform of my mission, be my mission field, be the platform uh, for missional service and missional engagement? That requires intentional conversations, but that's the question that needs to be circulating, whether it's in the graduating senior's mind or the freshman's mind. I love that. Uh, something I've heard you say that honestly has helped color even my language as I'm talking to students. You've said this, you said, when you graduate, don't put job 
the job offer at the center of your decision making, right. put kingdom at the center. What do you mean by yeah. that? Can you can you explain that? Yeah, kingdom over career, right? Um, so, I mean, it's just a it's it's a retraining of our mind. That if you read like Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, everything he's doing is everything the Bible's doing. It's saying the world thinks this way, one way, and I'm calling you to think a different way. It begins with thinking. It begins with a mindset, a kingdom mindset, which is that the the traditional path of of you know an American or someone who studied in the states is you come to school, get the best grades you can, and then get the best job opportunity you can. And what that typically means is what the most appealing salary package, which is helpful. I mean, it, it's helpful. Uh, you may be able to find lots of ministry, but but that's typically outside of that, maybe some work life balance, like do how many sick days a year do I get? Those kind of things. Is telework a potential? But these are such light metrics that really come and go with seasons. Um, and I mean, if the last few months of COVID nineteen haven't told us anything, it told us that everything changes in those. So I think I think rather those questions are helpful and necessary. I'm not going to discount them, but there are other questions to ask first, like potential impact. Uh, what kind of lostness will I be around? Am I going to be in a strategic place to reach lostness? Uh, uh, what, is the, what is the Christian witness or the Christian presence where I will be? Is there a community from which I can, uh, to which I can gather and from which I can be sent? These are questions that typically are asked later in the process, unfortunately. We typically ask questions about salary package, telework, work-life balance, location, and if, the city, if there's a lot of green space, you know, those kinds of things. Those are good questions. I'm not discounting them. They're all gifts from God. But maybe just reverse the order. Hmm. And, I, and I think it's pretty clear, uh, you know, um, there are a lot of good things when you graduate, a lot of good opportunities. Life is full of good opportunities. The church is full of good opportunities. But it doesn't mean it's the right opportunity. So, so we have to say no to a lot of good sometimes to say yes to the right thing. And I think if we ask those kingdom questions first, it's going to then shape the rest of the questions when we consider career. I, I love that. When, I, when I'm thinking about kingdom, what does it mean to pursue the kingdom of God? I'm thinking, well, that means I have the king in mind. The, yeah. Luke 15 gives me this beautiful portrait of three scenes that talk to Jesus's heart for the lost, a, a lost sheep, a lost coin, a lost son. Uh, the only time in the gospels where Jesus gives three illustrations to drive home the same point. He really cares about the lost. Or when you see the king walking into the temple and turns the tables yeah. over because he's righteously angry at the injustice or yeah. traveling, traveling from town to town and meeting felt needs. And just at the heart of Jesus is this, this servant. He, he's meeting the needs of people around him, but coming with the message. And I love what you're saying because if I'm making decisions post-graduation, if I'm having God's kingdom in mind and I'm thinking about the king. So am I, am I putting what he cares about at the forefront of my decision making? Where, where do I see great lostness? Where do I see injustice that I can step into and bring justice? Where can I be of best service with the giftings, the wiring, my education? Where can I serve with a, a gospel-centered community? So I, man, I just love what you're saying there as far as kingdom over career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think right here is also important um, the question that I started with of those high school seniors, uh, I just got to say, I mean, there is no time. The world is telling you to, to, it's like a game of Monopoly. And the world's telling you, you do A, then B, then C, then D. And at some point in your mind as a graduating senior, you're probably thinking, yeah, there will be a day when, when I'll do full-time missionary work. You know, I can see myself doing that. There is no better time then, uh, then the next two years after graduation, uh, to give yourself to full-time missions, whether internationally or in North America, I'm telling you, there's no better time. And that package that you're offered, that great salary package, chances are, this is a little known secret, it'll be there when you get back. And, and, and But the promise is, if it's not there when you get back, there's another one. And it may not look like you think it would. Uh, you may not come back. You may serve where you go forever. But just, you know, don't, don't allow yourself to too quickly make a decision is a key word. 
we say we've prayed about it. Have we prayed the King's will or our will, you know? Um, but yeah, I just got to throw it in there. Like, don't throw that out the window. Even as a graduating senior, he's not considered it. Um, best time, best opportunity of your life is going to be right now uh, to give two years or more uh, to full-time missions. That's great. When, when we're thinking about pursuing God's kingdom after graduation, as, as you've talked with a lot of uh, seniors who are making some big decisions, you know, once they get the diploma, what are things that you see get in the way of putting kingdom at the center or were things that get in the way where you see that career kind of take priority over, over kingdom? How would you speak yeah. into that? Debt and expectation. Um, debt feels like it's crushing you or you've got to deal with it quickly. Uh, and you do, you need to be responsible to that. Uh, you kind of see that biblical model of how, how debt becomes so enslaving, right? When you feel a lot of student loans over your head that now there's no more deferred payment. So debt and then expectation, and, and really by expectation, typically that's family expectation. Uh, maybe they help fund your education. Maybe you're the third generation MD or MD to B. I don't know what it is. Um, but typically, most expectations um, can be dealt with. And a lot of times those expectations are us putting them on ourselves mm -hmm. because we never t take the time to have the hard conversations. Hey, mom, dad, you know, whomever it may be, I feel this way. Is it true? Because I sense God desiring me to do this. Um, with, with debt, manage that debt, make a plan, but also understand there's a pattern to that as well. Like um, the last thing you want to do is, is feel enslaved to job to try to free yourself from the enslavement of debt, to trade one enslavement for another. <laughs> and so because uh, that's that's often what people do. Um, honor that. Seek ways to 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 manage that, but don't allow it to crush you. Don't allow it to crush you, um, and don't let it drive the entirety of your thoughts and opinions after graduation. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I, I, just thinking back to when I graduated, and almost like there's there's this tug of war pulling on one side of what God wants for me, and the other side different things that you just mentioned as far as pulling at me in the other direction. And I think what I've seen things get in the way in terms of where I'm not pursuing God's kingdom, but maybe my own is you've already mentioned this going where the money trail leads mm -hmm. and just having to remember, Jesus says it, it's hard for a rich man to enter God's kingdom. <laughs> it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. So me chasing the money is not going to lead anywhere good. Or you mentioned the expectations of family. I'm just, the verse come, came to mind with Paul talking about if I'm going to be a servant of man in Galatians 1.10, I can't be a servant of God. But that's, that's right. definitely that's definitely a pull. The uh, wanting to, to be uh, pleasing the people in our lives and people that we love, people that care about us. Or uh, maybe you've, you've seen this too, but that, that temptation to think about, all right, once I graduate, I'm going to go somewhere and I want to settle down. I'm finally going to be a place where I can relax get that house, get that fence, get that golden retriever. And, uh, isn't and it like a goal? It's a golden doodle. Now that's the new is, dog. <laughs> okay. So just, 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 you need to be aware of that. Are those the dogs that, uh, they don't, they don't shed they're, any hair. Supposedly they're hypoallergenic. They're just huge poodles. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, you're going to get that golden doodle and that picket fence. Yeah. Yeah. And just having to go back to, I'm thinking about, uh, Hebrews 11, that, that hall of faith and what defined their faith was that they're not looking to this world. They're looking to the next. And that's what's really guiding their decision. So trying to yeah. forsake all this temptation of like right here, right now being comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, I think there's a balance there too. Uh, people may end up in that type of situation. They may end up in an opportunity where they, get a golden doodle and, and you know the measures the measure but you may not and and it's it's a matter of of delight and desire that's what the psalmist would tell us right so we're going to desire what we delight in um and delight in most and so if if a golden doodle and a great paying job are properly ordered under an obedience and love for christ then great mm -hmm. If you'll figure how to fit the king in after you get the golden doodle and have two kids, 
something's wrong with that ordering. So it's the kingdom is a rightly ordered kingdom too. That's good. And, and that goes to prioritizing, like I said earlier, kind of your decision matrix following graduation. It's a, it's a rightly ordered matrix as opposed to the world. Just remember, it's like you, you said it, I've heard it said, the, the kingdom of God is an upside down kingdom, right? Strong or weak, weak or strong, poor or rich and rich or poor. And keep going with that. That's the way they talk about it. So whatever decision matrix you're, if you're at a secular institution, which almost everyone is, the way that your career counselors speak, listen to it. There's some truth in there. Flip it on its head and you'll see the kingdom principle, principle at work usually. Yeah, that's really good. Seth, I want to take a minute now and just describe our logo because most people don't know why our K is backwards. Thank you. <laughs> I always remind you of your logo. <laughs> it's uh, it, the re, you know, it's not just a stylistic choice. It's to remind us that, like you mentioned, the kingdom of God is backwards to the world that we live in. Uh, thank you for that reminder. It's good. It's good for my heart to hear that. Uh, when 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 considering staying or going for a college student, staying or going. What questions would it be important to be asking? If God is calling that student out of their current context, what would it mean to leave well? And what, what should be some of my biggest prayers and pursuits as I'm making that transition? Because so we're seeing people stay and in, in, in investing back into our church, and we thank God for that. And we also celebrate when people are sent out with God's kingdom in mind. That's, we want to be a ascending church just as much as seeing people invest in what God's doing where we're at. How would you encourage that student that feels called to, to stay, to, feels called to go? How, what are you saying to, the, to those different students? So I was talking to a student yesterday who's probably um, either has hit the submit button for journeyman through the International Mission Board either today or will do so by the end of the week. And she said something profound that I think is pertinent here. She said I, she went um, uh, a few months ago, just to spend some time with full-time missionaries to see their rhythm. And she was telling me, she says, I was so comfortable there. Not, I was comfortable. I, I felt an e, I felt a peace there. It was the word because I was doing the same thing there I'm doing here. And that that's important. If you feel called particularly, like what is the rhythm of your ministry where you're at? Like, are you faithful? in making disciples? Uh, are you faithful in, in church? Are you faithful in community? If you're doing that here, sometimes people will have this notion that it, when they get there, that's when ministry will begin. You know, <laughs> they're just, they're just, they're just training up for when they get there. So that's a, I think if you're considering, or since a car coming by me right now, so the background is, if you're sensing, um, calling the first question is what are you doing where you're at because i do know this god has called you where you're at um that's good so but but at the same time kind of a dual track still wrestle through talk about that calling with others in the rhythm of ministry where you're at don't let that go um it's there for a reason uh if you are feeling a strong pull to stay which is very much a call of God in scripture at times, um, then don't, I, I just don't feel bad about that. Sometimes as the church, we talk about going and, um, you know, others just feel like, oh, I'm, I'm just a sender. Uh, well, no, there's no just as in the kingdom uh, in that sense. There's not a, a priority, right, in the body of Christ. So, so like own that own that again both of these are founded in motive why why and it goes back to that kingdom prioritization that we talked about towards the beginning um i would say that there is a joy in both and the church is healthiest when both are happening right yeah. um it's that's what makes the church the church is when there are senders and goers and it's this movement of senders and goers yeah, that's great. Yeah, I loved uh, just kind of the challenge, but the truth of what you're saying there in terms of if I, if I feel called to go, I should be able to answer the question, whatever I'm thinking about, I'm going to be doing there. Have I been doing it here and now? Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I've heard, I heard someone say, before you think about going on a mission trip overseas, have you been able to go across the street? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But then also just the, the, the importance of getting godly people 
around your life to help you with that decision. I mean, that's God's given us wisdom through the church to help us discern what God's calling in our lives is. Yeah. And I mean, people are people everywhere in the world, right? So, so if you can't do, or don't feel, if you don't feel like you're called to do ministry where you're at, uh, I, I need you to check your motives, right? If you don't feel like you're called to pour into the local church or the people where you're at, uh, maybe just because they're familiar to you, that's not as exciting. I think your motive for missions may be one of, uh, maybe more of an adventurous spirit than a call of God. So, so like if you don't love people where you are, um, then what I would encourage you to do if you want to go to another country is take a great vacation there. But um, if you love people where you are and you love people because they're image bearers and you sense that calling, then that's very likely the Lord's wanting you specifically to those, that, those people groups or that place. That's good. Seth, just, uh, we call it the King's Table because we want to make it conversational on this podcast. Uh, say a student is sitting, I think right now you're on a four-wheeler. Yeah. By your I'm house sure in Boone, North people, Carolina. And when people watch the video, they'll see <laughs> this is the surrounding I have. So. This is great. So and imagine, uh, imagine someone's on another four wheeler with you. You're taking a drive, and he's he or she's just asking you a question. Hey, Seth, like any other wisdom that you can feed me as I'm thinking about making a decision? What? what would you say? Well, it's fitting that I'm in the middle of the woods on a four wheeler. Now this car coming by me, you know, doesn't make it too peaceful. But um, it's fitting that I'm in the woods on a four wheeler as a reminder um, through all of this and through all of the ambitions we have and all of the excitement and perhaps debt is in the picture, student loans, family expectations, the call of God, church service. Um, What made the nation of Israel so markedly different from the cultures around them is that from sundown to sundown, from a Friday to Saturday, they stopped working. And then they had these festivals through the year where they wouldn't work and the world was looking around them and they said, that's not efficient. That's not practical. But God was reminding them continually that he led them into the land of promise. He led them, he, he landed that he led them into the land of rest. And Jesus tells us in Hebrews three and four that by entering into him, we enter into rest. And so don't forget to enjoy Jesus. You will, you will. And I mentioned this in a Facebook posting not long ago is you can easily miss Jesus in missions. You can easily miss Jesus in ministry. You can easily miss Jesus in career. Slow down and change your rhythm so that you enjoy his goodness and creation, his goodness all around you and rest. Like you may need to step back before you make some major decisions and just spend time with the Lord and rest in the woods on a four-wheeler. <laughs> Uh, people in Boston said they don't they don't have that luxury. <laughs> um, there is I'm going to tell you this is the neat thing about you Bostonians is that you can drive or even ride not too far away, and there are these green things called trees. <laughs> May not be the same species, but they're just as good. So that's now true. the four wheeler I can't help you with. Um, that's true. That's you're right. Oh, but you're right. We can, we can take some drives on the highways and see some trees. God's God's common grace is all over and um, we miss it all too often. Yeah, that's good. I just thinking about what you said and, you know, uh, being, being stuck in the house a lot in, in the city. Yeah. Um, I think the Lord has really challenged me in terms of uh, you, you can still seek me. And it, I, I want to use this time where I've brought you into isolation to provide some heaven-like clarity. I feel like that's just been the phrase that the Lord has really put into my heart in, in terms of First uh, Peter one thirteen. When be alert, uh, but set your set your minds on the hope that Jesus Christ is coming again. And uh, it's it's just been it's been refreshing for my heart to get a fresh vision of heaven when I'm looking at Revelation five and I'm I'm seeing the line of Judah, but the lamb that was slain and the excellencies of Christ and He's the one who's worthy to open up the scrolls. Like I can give my life to the one who is worthy, but when I'm but I'm thinking about heaven and I'm thinking about the saints and the angels and they're all just worshiping. It's like that's what I want my life to be about. I want it to be about going to the places where there's not yet worship of the king. And I want my life to be about bringing as many people with me so that they can be around this throne. And uh, it just the, the words, mm. well done, good and faithful servant. Mm. That's, that's uh, wanting uh, 
you know, we, we tend to think of it, a, all right, well, when I get to heaven, mm. but, well, I hear those words and I'm trying to just to reel it back. It's like, all right, when I wake up and I go to sleep, would, would the Lord have said on this day, well done, good mm. and faithful servant. And so it's just been, that, that's maybe something I would say sitting down over a cup of coffee with someone, like you mentioned, take a step back, get a fresh vision of heaven and let heaven like yeah. clarity help you make earthly decisions yeah. yeah that's right yeah and be a part of bringing that to, to bear on creation right that's the, the joy of the church and being part of the church is that we are an embassy for the kingdom of god well i hope you enjoyed today's discussion around how to have god's kingdom in mind after you graduate Glad that you could join us at the King's Table. You can find more information and resources from Kings Hill Church at www.kingshillboston.com.